So you will get, I'm not going to do it in this class because it takes too much time, but you would gather your students around you, okay? So the students don't have to be sitting in desks like this. The students can move their chairs, they can come sit around you, you would have a book. I have some books, uh, we will do that this today. Okay, get them out of their desks and sitting in a circle on the floor, in the group, <coughs> or even outdoors, okay? Now, I want to, real quickly, Look at an example of the bedtime story. Ah, and one thing I want to make clear though here is that your English is better than my Korean. <laughs> your English, your, all of you, even if you're a high level student or a low level student, all of you, your English is better than my Korean. And keep this in mind, is that here I'm going to be using, this is a Korean book that I'm reading with my son. Um, and you will see is that the books really can help you perform beyond your English ability. Okay. Okay, I'll start that again. He says, He says, <laughs> Opportunity for us to then, ah, 
kangaroo, king, uh, kangaroo subakoga, right? And you say, yeah, the kangaroo is eating watermelon. That gives you an opportunity because you know where that child's focus is now at that point. <coughs> even, even though it didn't, wasn't part of the story. There was my, do my dog getting in the way of the camera. stopped me. That means that his focus is on something else. Okay. Parents will, parents will go along with that. Whereas a teacher, right, a teacher has a schedule. The teacher tries to keep the schedule. Okay? We are responsive to the children. We allow the children control. And it's going to lead to a teaching moment. It's just focusing on, he's going, oh, and these are bubbles that are underwater. And again, that's my opportunity. And, and again, I'm not thinking about it. So right now, I'm saying, oh yeah, lots of bubbles. That's the opportunity for him to begin to learn the language, right? Because he's thinking, he's focusing on the bubbles, and he's saying, oh, and I'm saying, yeah, lots of bubbles. He will, he, he will acquire, like, he knows bubbles now, I'm sure. <laughs> Is that I want you to think about, look at the environment here, okay? <clears throat> and we talked about how important uh, our emotions are, right? Is that we have constantly, right now at this moment, you have hormones that are moving through your blood system and through your brain, okay? So here he has a process, an event, which is the, share, the, the reading, the process of reading. <coughs> I'm reading to him. What do you think are his emotional connections or emotional associations with the event of reading? What do you think are his emotional connections with reading at this time? Okay, again, comfort, warmth, love, right? So that is something is that that emotional connection will, can become connected with an action or with a behavior. In this case, the behavior is reading. So, keep that in mind, because you're going to see what happens next. Because these emotional connections are very important. Again, this is why, again, remember McDonald's and Starbucks, okay? They, they went, and Calvin Klein, okay, and Chanel. They manipulate your emotional connections to make you do things, make you buy their products. We can do probably the same thing as teachers, actually. Oh. First, we're going to look at one, one thing here. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then when the tiger dies, right? 
eat in the, the party, they eat the tiger. Mm -hmm. You're, yeah, it goes in a circle, huh? That's interesting, huh? Jimmy saw. Yeah. Yum yum, mokki go, mokya, dashi, chorong, gotsuro, gotsuro. Chan, shingi haji. So another thing too is that for our understanding, and this is for you as well as me, this is why I often write in your notes, try to use your own words. Because for us to understand something, we have to put into our own words. So also opportunities for children to speak, we want to be receptive to when children are speaking to us as teachers. Because that's the time that, that people put things into their own words. And when we put into our own words, that reflects a person's understanding. Okay? Not you copying my words. That does not reflect your understanding. When you try to put into your own words, and that's what he was doing there. And he was teaching me, right? Even though I kind of already know, but he's teaching me. And instead of, instead of me trying to teach him, I allowed him to teach me. I said, oh, oh, yeah, oh. Oh, that's how it is, oh, okay. And then what happens? <coughs> this is later this is later in the week. My son cannot read. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure he's also looking at words, but he can't read. <laughs> And this is known as the act, the act of reading, okay? He's not really reading. He's not really reading. It's just, is that he has, is that this habit, or this action, this behavior of reading, is not negative. It's a positive thing. And so then in his free time, sometimes he will go and sit down and look at books. And that, so he's forming a very positive habit, right? A habit that is going to, I, I'm not worried, he will learn how, I mean, he will learn how to read. I'm not worried about that. All of you learn how to read. But also though is that he has now a habit of going and sitting down and looking at books. And again, <coughs> people who are successful academically moving forward in their life are lifelong learners. Lifelong independent learners. I didn't tell him, go read a book. I did not tell him to do this. This is something, I was in the bedroom, I came out, and he had had a book. I was like, oh, I better get the camera. I can use this in my class. Okay, do you see the point here? Get the idea? Lifelong independent learners are people who are also lifelong independent readers. And it's a habit. And it comes from having positive emotional connections and associations with the behavior. If you have any questions about that, ask me. Yeah. No, I mean I can't I can't make them. I can't make them be an independent learner. So I think people who are independent lifelong readers are also lifelong independent learners. The reason why he is an independent reader is because he enjoys reading. The same as someone in this classroom here who plays badminton. The reason why you play badminton and you practice more, or maybe for dancing, okay? Someone who enjoys and practices dancing is because that person enjoys doing it, okay? Reading happens to be something that is very connected with academic performance. People who read <coughs> regularly are people who perform well in school, okay? So that's a habit that we want to promote, but we can't force people to do it. It's not something we can teach. It's not something we can make someone do. So what can you do is you just make it enjoyable. You make it something that people enjoy, that they have positive emotional connections with, okay? So 
Choose a good level book for your students. Be careful to choose the correct level, not too many words. Don't worry about having many words, okay? Some of the books <coughs> you brought today have too many words. Uh, yeah, even this, even this would be too many words, okay? Um, for depending on your level of students. Be careful with the books that you choose, okay? Choose an interesting story. There are so many boring children's books. Avoid boring children's books. Choose something that's interesting. For example, my son and I, uh, we love Dr. Seuss books. Dr. Seuss books are really interesting. I can read in red, and I can read in blue. I can read in pickle color, too. I can read in bed, and I can read uh, purple and brown. I can read in a circle and upside down. Read with my left eye, I can read with my right, I can read Mississippi with my eyes shut tight. I didn't study that book. I've just read it so many times that I remember it, and my son loves that book. And there are good pictures that go along with it. So read it yourself before you read it to the class. Okay? Is it an interesting book to you? Does it seem like something that, that's interesting? Okay? Don't choose books because you want to teach children something. Don't choose a book because you think, oh, these are good words for them to learn. No. Choose a book because it's interesting. We make connections between sound and words, and I'm going to do this in just a minute. I'll do it right now. <clears throat> make connections between sound and words on the page. Do you see what I'm doing? Make connections between sound and words on the page. Yes, because I'm speaking, as I speak it, that's a sound, that's a phonetic symbol, I'm making a connection between the phonetic symbol and the written symbol, or the visual symbol. So when you are reading your book, you will make connections. Make connections between sound and words on the page. Make connections between text and images. How do we make connections between text and images? I gave you an example when we watched the video. Okay. What did I do with the Dadam Jiyajashi? Okay. Dadam Jiyajashi? Oh, Dadam Jiyajashi. So, we make connections between the sound, because I speak it, dadam jiyajashi, that's a phonetic sound. We also have the written or visual symbol here, and then we then connect it with the image. And the image is part of our concept. Think back to what we talked about, how we acquire language. We have our concepts, we have the objects, <coughs> and those get connected together with the symbols. Right? Okay. But don't do that too much, okay? Just for the simple ones, the easy things, the things that are easy. Avoid interrupting the flow and rhythm of the story. We want the story to be going forward. We want it to kind of flow, okay? But make connections throughout the process. So, you will make connections <coughs> between sounds and words, or sound and text. You will make connections between text and images. Okay, we make connections, but keep your story going, okay? Keep a good rhythm and a good flow to your story. Don't stop, don't break up your story too much, because the story is important. We love stories. Why do you go to the movies? It's a story. That's what it is. We, people like different stories. Some people like romance, some people like action, right? But we like stories. Don't break up the story too much. Do not translate and recast L1 to L2. So, time for us to learn. Okay, everyone remembers L1? What is L1 for you? L1 is Korean. What is L2? English for our classes. We recast. So, when you are reading a story, 
children will say things and say, oh, come veggie. And you will say, yes, dog. Notice you did not translate it. You did not say, oh, yeah, kanaji is dog. <coughs> no. What we said is a student says kanaji. They speak in Korean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I say, yeah, dog. Yes. So I don't speak the L1. I speak English. Yeah. I recast their language. They, I, I know what they are thinking about, even though here maybe this is not talking about the dog. Maybe it was. I don't know. But the children says dog, and I say, yeah, dog. Or the child says kangaji, I say, yeah, dog. Because that's an opportunity, that's a teachable moment. That child is focused on the dog, and then on the kangaji, and then I give them the English. Yeah, dog. Notice the child spoke in Korean. I don't say, no, no Korean. <laughs> we don't do that. We, we want children to participate. We want children to spontaneously participate in our class, in the reading of the story, even if it's in Korean. And then we use that opportunity to give them the English. So again, allow spontaneous participation. Allow children to speak out. Don't, don't always be saying, shh, be quiet, shh, be quiet. Okay, it's okay, we want children to speak, and we are responsive to them. Reading time occurs every day. More importantly, Korean. <coughs> You should have a Korean book that you read to your classes every day. Korean is more important than English. Why? Because you live in Korea. <laughs> okay? So, the reading time occurs every day. You should probably, especially with your lower level, younger students, you should be reading a children's book. Find a little bit of time to read them a Korean book every day. If you have time for your English classes, find a little time to also read an English book and use that as an opportunity to help them improve their English skills. Okay, but again, Korean is more important. Okay? Here this was, you know, this is English going to school in America. Okay, we want to focus on Korean first. And then, of course, English uh, as a second language or as a foreign language. Make it an enjoyable experience. This is most important. Do not try to teach too much. Okay? Stop trying to teach. Don't teach. Just focus on making it enjoyable. We want children to experience the joy of reading. Same as my son enjoys the event of reading, and then he, even though he can't read, he'll sit with a book and he will look at a book. And then later in life, he will, in his free time, he will read. And reading is very important. We talked about last week, right? Why? Why is reading important? People who read a lot, what? Have bigger vocabulary. People who read have a bigger vocabulary. When we have a bigger vocabulary, we're able to perform better in school because we can understand things better. All right. This right here, this is the method that we will evaluate you by next time that you come to class. So probably in the section where it says, write down the demonstration expectations. <coughs> you want to write these down. This is what we will evaluate you on. Follow the shared reading method which this was the shared reading method. So hopefully you took good, good notes of the shared reading method. Choose a book for low level learners, second grade. This will be second grade Korean students. You will choose an English book, an English children's <coughs> book, that'll be for Korean second graders. I don't, I don't fully agree with this one though. Okay, make sure students understand the story without breaking up the rhythm too much. How can you make sure children understand the story? You can't. <laughs> I don't I can't I don't know what you understand right now. <coughs> you understand how you understand that. The same with my son. When I read a book to him, he understands however he understands. I don't fully agree with this one. Um, because we can't
can't really ever make sure that anyone understands anything. Um, You'll have ten, you don't need to write every word, right? You just summarize it the best you can. Uh, you'll have 10 minutes is probably not going to be the case. We don't have time. Our classes are too large. It'll probably be closer to five minutes. But it's okay to practice for 10. Okay. Before she could even speak words, Trixie, Trixie, yeah, Trixie, went on an errand with her daddy. <coughs> daddy. Trixie and her daddy went down the block. Down the block. Through the park. Through the park. Past the school. And into the laundromat. Trixie helped her daddy. <coughs> put the laundry, laundry, into the machine. The machine. She even got to put the money, money, into the machine. <coughs> the machine. Then they left. <gasps> but a block or so later, Trixie realized something. <laughs> Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Aggle, flaggle, clabble. Mm -hmm. It's not word. Remember before she could talk? That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Aggle, flaggle, clabble, said Trixie again. <coughs> I'm not going to point right now. Blaggle, plabble, lumpy, flappy, snurp. I'm going to go for that. 
Now please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled. What? She went boneless. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop there because this takes too much time. So, notice what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm connecting sound to text and text to images, but only simple ones that I can do easily and naturally. Okay? So, <coughs> oh, nice. books here. Choose a good book. There are many, there are some bad books in these in these piles here. Just choose one. This would be a bad book. Too many words. <laughs> 